this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the basics of uh, neural operators, which are mapping between infinite dimensional spaces. And these are basically generalization of um, traditional neural networks, which are mapping between finite dimensional spaces. In order to go over these basics, I try to, for each concept, I try to first uh, show that, that concept in uh, the setting of neural networks and then uh, show how you can generalize that, that concept to, to neural operators. Okay. So if I have a neural network G, let's say it's a mapping from RD to RM. For example, this G can, as an input can get like um, 64 by 64 image an output a class like a 10 dimensional vectors and classes or another image or it can rd can be like basically a space of a bunch of vectors and g receives a vector and outputs a, a, sca a scalar or a, another vector okay so it's mapping between finite dimensional space and neural operator g is a mapping from a generally from a banach space to another uh, Banach space that I'm going to represent by A and U. So, and for, for an example, imagine this space of A or, or this G receives, as an input, receives a, receives a function and outputs uh, another function. Uh, practical example of it is like, uh, let's, let's imagine I give you the temperature on this wall and ask you what is the temperature field in, uh, in, in this room. Or if I have a cup and you start steering it at some time, time, I can see what is the condition of the, the, the liquid and I ask okay, what is going to happen in the next few times. So, so the input is, um, for example, the, the input is the function of the temperature on the wall and the output is going to be the function which represents the temperature in, the, in this room. Okay, so uh, so this is a basically uh, this is the input space of functions, or actually the, the input space of this G or, or domain of this G, which is this capital G or calligraphic G, which is my neural operator, or which is my operator, and it's going to output a, an element in this panic space U, for example. Okay, in this video, I'll let's just talk about the function spaces. So that's A is, let's imagine this A is a function space. U is also a function space. Okay. So this is that basically general definitions of neural networks and neural operators. And of course, neural network G is parameterized by a bunch of parameters, and this neural operator G is also parameterized by a bunch of uh, parameters. Okay, so um, let's uh, go to the architecture of the traditional neural network. Um, so this G is a function which, uh, as an input, receives as a d-dimensional input. Let's call it like that, R, which is in R D. And then it uh, multiplies it with a bunch of, uh, so it multiplies this uh, R with, uh, with, a with a matrix, let's call it uh, K1, oops, to come up with an, to come up with a bunch of other vectors. Yeah, I'm gonna call them H1, so I'm going to have, any weights here, so let's call it K. And then after having this vector R multiplied by this uh, matrix K1, we're gonna have another vector H1. And then we, uh, we pass this um, elements or entries of H1 through a nonlinearity to get, let's call it, v1 and we just do it a bunch of times and in the end we come up with output which is like in uh, rm okay 
So this is a traditional like neural network and uh, it basically covers uh, many, many architectures that you might care about. Okay. So uh, if I want to write this uh, neural network G in a more abstract way, I can write G of uh, R is equal to, if it has like L layers, uh, L times uh, nonlinearity, let's call it sigma, okay, L minus one, another nonlinearity, and uh, so on. Okay, and then the input I receive. Okay. So what it does, receives a vector R, the, it does a linear transformation. And then locally or element wise does the nonlinearity. So this operation here is uh, element wise. And this multiplying this matrix K with, uh, with uh, this uh, um, input is going to be a non local operator or is a linear transformation. I just realized that my handwriting is not that bad. Clear, so I try to be more uh, clear. Okay, so now I can also define this. Uh, so yeah, I know that like, H1 is equal to uh, K1. Let me, let's not write it in H's form. So H1, which is a vector, um, uh, the ith element of this vector. I can write it as summation of J, K1, I and J, R, J, right? Let's be consistent with the equation. Okay, and uh, H, then I have this V1, I is equal to the sigma of H one I. So I can just uh, do, this is for first layer and I can do the same thing for all the layers. And uh, in general, the form I'm gonna get is going to be H L of I is equal to J K L I and J V of L minus one and J and H method. And V L is going to be sigma of H L I. Okay, so this is basically the way uh, we can construct a neural network, uh, a deep neural network and uh, and um, it goes all the way to output the, the, the output G of. Okay. So now, given this structure, I'm trying to show how we can construct a neural operator. Okay. So again, neural operator was, for some reason, not right. Okay. Is G from a function space to another function space. Okay. For simplicity, Let's assume that this um, A is a function of, is a space of real valued uh, functions which have domain uh, also be in the space of reals. Okay, basically any function in A, in A is actually, is, um, is basically a function in R. Okay, so basically A of X is, is, is in R and uh, X itself is in R too, okay? Similarly, for any U in the space of U, I can, I have this U of X is in R, okay? And X is also in R, okay? 
So now, for simplicity, I'm trying to show how we can construct this neural operator, which is mapping from a function like this to another function like this. Okay, so it's like input is a function, which, which is defined in R and is real value, to another function which is defined in R and is also real value. So this is for just a sake of example. Okay, so now let's see how we can use the insight we have about traditional neural networks and extend them to um, to to neural operators. Okay, so as you see here in this uh, diagram, uh, the input is like a bunch of numbers. So now instead of having a bunch of numbers as an input, I have a function as an input. Okay, so like it's not like th this, these numbers are indexed by i. So i is equal to one, it's first entry to d is the last entry. So the way my input now is indexed is not to like this discrete numbers like one, two, three, two, four, two, d. Now my input is indexed by, by, uh, by a space of real. Okay, so, so now my input instead of being indexed by numbers is actually indexed by x, actually. So the, the number here is a of x, and this is my input a, okay? And now, if I, if I had a vector, I had, I would have taken the first entry of the vector and multiply by a number, and take all the entries, multiply by different numbers, and then sum them up to come up with the number for next, next layer, okay? So now here, since I don't have these entries, what I can do, if I look at, if I take the, Conceptually, if I take the limit and look at the continuum, I can write down the v1, so h1. This entry of h1, instead of being like now multiplication of the inputs with a bunch of different numbers, I can write down that linear transformation as a in linear integral uh, operator. Okay, so I can have here an uh, integral operator. Okay, and then basically what it means is, uh, so if I had a matrix K here, I was in a neural network, I was taking all these entries here and multiply them by a bunch of numbers and then come up with a value here. Okay, so now since I have this function in defining R, I can't do that, but I can take the, take the integration. Okay, so I replace the linear transformation which was sorry, this matrix uh, multiplication in the traditional neural networks with um, integral uh, operator A1. And now after taking integral of this, this function with respect to this uh, kernel, I'm going to have another function here, H1. I'm, I'm gonna write down what, it, what this one exactly means. And now if I have, now I have, when I have this function H1, I can similar to the neural networks, the traditional ones, I can have this uh, nonlinearity, which is the local operator operation, which is like the element wise operation to come up with another function V1, which is this one is basically nonlinearity. And now this V1 goes, uh, is going to play the role of the input to the next step. And then I can do, it, do this many times to come up with uh, the output function u. Okay, u is also is, is a function which receives x as an input and output outputs in this case. Uh, outputs in this case. Okay, let's uh, make it more concrete. So if my input is a, so I have g of a. I'm going to write the similar thing we had here for neural operators. Okay, so G of A is going to be, if this is basically a layer neural operator, it's going to be KL sigma, oops, KL L minus one sigma, and blah blah, which goes to this is my which is going to be 
here we're going to um, a okay so this is basically in, in the, the the definition of the g the neural operator so now i'm going to write down this step in neural networks and show what is this one exactly for neural operators so you see, if you see for any entry i i'm summing up all our j's and multiplying them by uh, num by different numbers okay i'm going to do the same thing here okay, so it's going to be h1 is h1 of uh oops h1 at some point x is going to be so now since i don't have a vector as an input i'm, I'm i have a like function as an input i compute the integral so it's going to be integral of k1 instead of having i and j i'm going to have x and y a y d mu y okay this d mu y is like a measure i'm integrating with respect to or against against two it can be also like never measure for simplicity it doesn't matter at this point okay so basically this step is almost identical to this step if I take the continuous continuum version of this step in neural networks. Okay. In other words, you can say if I discretize neural operators, it reduces to um, traditional neural networks. Okay. So this step, similar to neural networks, is global operation. Operation. So it's a global. Okay, so it looks at all the the whole input and outputs uh, a function, um, elements of each function. So now I'm going to do this step. This step should be straightforward. It's like element-wise nonlinearity, and then the neural operator version of that step is v one of x is equal to sigma, sigma or uh, the nonlinearity h1 of x okay so now i can do this thing many many times and write down write it down for uh, each layer what happened? okay it's going to be hl of x in general form is going to be kl x and y v l minus one y d mu y Okay, which is again a global operation. And I'm going to have VL evaluated at X is sigma of HLX, which is a local operation, okay, it's element X. Similar to neural networks, each layer produces different vector spaces. And it's just basically the transformation between those. Here we are we, we are doing the same thing. Now this vector space is actually our function space. So this is, uh, and then at, at the end, in the last layer, we just do one linear transformation, which is one integral operator operation to come up with G of A, which is our U, okay? So this is basically the basic, these are basically the basic concept of uh, neural operators. Now you might ask me, hey, uh, well, this is good, in neural networks, we were learning this weights case. You can imagine in neural operators, you are learning this weight functions. What happens? So, um, sorry about this computation. So, in neural in traditional neural networks, this this k is actually matrix with a bunch of elements. But here is a is a function itself which receives x and y as an input. Or basically indexes indices as, a, uh, as an input and outputs a number or vector or whatever okay so in neural networks we learn this matrix kl in neural operators we learn this function kl so our we parameterize uh, the neural operators with this uh, kls and bunch of other stuff okay so you might ask hey in uh, in, in in neural networks i have bias Okay, so basically in neural neural networks, you might say, 
I sometimes, gosh, I have bias added here. Never seen that. Okay. Where the bias uh, gets added in the neural operators, similar way you can have uh, bias here. Okay. You can do many things. You can say, okay, if my kernel here is indexed by X and Y, you can have your kernel instead of being indexed by X and Y, it can also be indexed by V L minus one Y as well. Okay, so this way you can have your kernel and itself depends on the input function, which is like a way you can get a nice uh, approximation out of neural operators. Okay, you can say, hey, my, my neural operator, now this operation is global. This is local. Can I have a global linear? Sorry, can I have it? So this is element wise, which is local. This is global. You might ask, can I have a local linear transformation uh, of, uh, in, built in here as well? Yeah, the answer is yes. For example, you can have H of L of, let me have this one here, H L of X, which is equal to integration of K L X and Y V L, D mu i, y. Okay, you can have this one. You, you can also add another term, which is uh, basically um, k, k prime of L, which is a function of y. So it's a function of x times V L minus one of x. Okay, so when you do transformation, the, the, the output in each layer, not only depends on the whole input, but also depends on the, the evaluation of the input at that location as well, okay? You can do many things. You can have, um, you can also have this kernel now here. You can also, instead of having the input at the previous layer, you can have K of X, Y, and also the A as an input here or sometimes you might want to have a x and a y here it basically depends on the application you are dealing with uh, for some applications this is a good thing okay so this is the base these are basic basic concepts of uh, neural operators so now in a, so how we can basically implement it. So we have this in, in integral operation here. How we can write down or implement this uh, integral operation in computers or like your favorite deep learning package. One way to do that is you can basically, this integral operation, we, we have so many numerical methods to approximate integrals. We can just use those. One way is, I can have HL X instead of being exact value of this integral, the way I'm going to implement it in, in say, Python, TensorFlow, or other things uh, is basically I can have summation of, uh, I use um, I of K1 X Y I K L Y I. Yeah, so basically what I do, I take this measure, I draw a bunch of samples out of it. It's similar to Monte Carlo, sample, Monte Carlo approximation. Integral. I draw a bunch of sample out of it, and then I just compute this summation. This summation is going to be approximation of a uh, good approximation of my integral, okay? This is basic in general, is these are called noise stream approximation. And there are many ways to do that, right? We can also have many other ways to compute this integral. So how you implement this one in computer? One way is very simple, is uh, using um, packages for graph neural networks. This is basically, you have 
when you have the evaluation of your kernel at a bunch of points, the each each layer of the graph neural network is going to be like you have a dynamic uh, graph, and uh, if you want to evaluate the H L at this point in space, and so I'm going like this. So if uh, you have you want to evaluate the uh, H at this point in space, you have a bunch of uh, Ys sampled from the space, and then just just connect them and the the. The way you connect them is through this um, neural network that you put on the edge of the graph. You can use many other methods, like um, multiple methods. You can use, um, if you have some aside information, you can use multi-grid method. You can use any favorite, your, your favorite uh, numerical method to compute this integral. There's one another way to do that, which is pretty cool, is if, uh, if you wanna, if you consider that your K is, for example, here, which you have two steps, one is this global, one is this uh, local operation. So I'm gonna, I'm, if I assume that this KL, X and Y in this equation, let's say call it equation star, if I'm willing to write down this as KL, X minus Y, the integral I'm gonna get is going to be H L X integral of K L X minus Y V L minus Y K prime L X V. Okay. If you look at this one closely, it's basically convolution. Okay. So if you're willing to replace this kernel with this uh, uh, kernel, which is the like x minus y, then you actually recover convolution. Okay, and your if you have this setting, there's a really nice way to approximate this uh, this integral using uh, pass free methods. Okay, if you can use this FFP to approximate this one. So in this case, this part, if I'm willing to write down write it down as FFP, is going to be f inverse of f of k multiplied by f of Okay. This is it. So, so this it, what it means is like instead of computing this integral, I can take the Fourier transform of this kernel and Fourier transform of the output of the previous layer, and do multiplication in the Fourier space. And now what I need to learn is k, or you can say, hey, instead of learning k, I can learn f of k. F is the Fourier transform of the k. So this way you can compute this. You can basically this is this can be like uh, parameters you want to learn, so you learn this part. Okay, so this is uh, this results in Fourier neural operators. And it's been a long that I haven't been uh, writing on this machine, and you can see my handwriting is not that good. Okay. So, so the, the, we, now we know how to establish a neural operator. We know what are the parameters to train on. So what are the, the changing parameters? And these are actually mapping between these uh, function spaces. So now how you, what's, what is left to have is the data set. So the data set you have is basically a pair of, so basically it's like a collection, of pairs of a AI, let's put the superscript AI in U of I is equal to one to. So you have your data set is going to be a bunch of data points. For example, in this room, I can set the temperature on the wall to have some function and see what happens in, in, in practice and record the function here. I can set it different differently. I can do it like hundred times, hundred different functions on the wall, temperature on the wall, and then uh, measure the temperature in the room. So I have a data set of hundred data points. I can use that one to train this uh, neural operator. Okay, and the way you do it is similar to back addition. And, uh, you can use SGD or uh, Adam or any or Sigma or sinus SGD. 
an argument. So this is basically it. And the thing, the important thing is, in order to learn these few parameters of the neural operator, the input and output of function is an infinite dimensional object. Okay. So it means that when you train a neural operator and these infinite dimensional objects, you have a ton of information. Okay. So if you have this much uh, uh, data, basically it's like infinite dimensional data, then the number of data points you actually need to train these neural operators is extremely low. Okay, so for, in order to train a model which does a learning for um, ImageNet, you probably need uh, millions of data points. But for neural operators, because the input and output are infinite dimensional objects and there's like infinitely many constraints to be satisfied, what happens is you just need few data points to actually train, which is quite amazing and interesting. Okay, so why, why this uh, architecture is interesting? There are two main reasons. One is like it's compatible with uh, what we understand from neural networks. In neural networks, we have input, linear transformation, nonlinearity, linear transformation, nonlinear. Here, uh, linear integral operator, nonlinearity, linear integral operator. And it's like discretization neural operator gives uh, neural networks, continuum version of neural networks gives neural operators. So these are like basic technical things we, why we, we like this architecture. So why, why this is important when, when, when we do mapping between finite and when infinite dimensional spaces. The last thing which is uh, important is actually this architecture I just talked about uh, gives us uh, a set of, uh, gives us a space of uh, neural operators that are universal approximator of operators. Okay, so we know neural networks are universal approximators. This uh, this architecture I just I talked about is also, also universal approximator of uh, um, operators. Uh, yeah, and also the, the thing is you can easily train them and they are fascinating when you train them and use them in, in real world applications. Okay. Uh, I'll post uh, the papers that this talk or sorry, this video was about in uh, on, the, on the YouTube uh, page and uh, feel free to check them, feel free to comment. Thank you.